Professor V.S. Subramanian, welcome to GMF Talk. Many people are very nervous about deepfakes and the potential they have to exacerbate the spread of misinformation. Do you share those concerns? Absolutely. So deepfakes can be generated today with really the push of a button, a little video recording. So for example, Sophie, if somebody wanted to create a deepfake of you or me, all they need is a little video recording of either you or me, or even in some cases, just an image and your audio. And then they can superimpose your likeness on top of a completely different video that they may have recorded in their home, own home or studio. And they can superimpose your voice on that and ensure that they can match the movement of your lips, the movement of your facial muscles to the speech that you're rendering in that video clip or audio clip. So it is something that at the push of a button can be used by an adverse actor to generate misinformation and disinformation at scale. That's a huge concern for all of us, not just me. So in what ways, if any, can deepfakes be a beneficial tool for journalists? For journalists, deepfakes might be useful in rendering uh, an image or a video interview such as this one in many different languages. So to give you an example, we are speaking in English right now, but let's say your organization wants to reach different populations in say Thailand and have you and me speaking in Thai, or they wanna reach Brazil and have you and me speaking Portuguese. So that's a legitimate deep fake where, for example, journalists might increase the reach of the programs that they create by generating deep fake audio hopefully with the consent of all parties involved and with clear markings that the audio was generated synthetically. Finally, what are your top tips on how someone could tell if this interview right now was real or fake? Well, top tips. One, I would take a video, regardless of whether it's this one or not, and do a reverse image search and say, you know, can we find videos on Google reverse image search, which has Sophie or VS in this exact same location in the exact same, um, you know, facial movements, head movements, uh, same outfits. Are we seeing that somewhere else? The probability that both you and I will be wearing exactly the same thing in exactly the same place, moving in exactly the same way in sync with each other is very low. If that's the case, that's an immediate tip off that, you know, this might be a suspicious video. The second is to try and look at the movement of the lips of any of the speakers, either you or me, in connection in, and see if it's synchronized properly with the voice that you hear as well. And the third tip I would say is, you know, use common sense. Common sense is a highly underrated skill. Are either Sophie or VS likely to be speaking about something that they have absolutely no knowledge about uh, are they in a context that seems just unreal? You've always got to look at context and think for yourself, is this fake, is this not? And last but not least, to add a fourth, I would say anytime a message seems surprising, be suspicious. Um, that's what we all need to exercise in this day and age.